four o'clock now on your Tuesday, and if you're seeing the storms out there, you're not alone. We're tracking afternoon storms up and down the front range. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. Right now, we're going to take a live look at the radar and also look at the skies. What you're not seeing in that image to the right is the lightning. There's a lot of lightning out there, but you can see the clouds, the rain forming in the distance. So much to talk about today. Let's take a look at Fort Collins because they have been getting slammed by a storm that really ranged from Boulder on up into Larimer County. A viewer just sent us this video just north of Boyd Lake. The rain really hammering down mm. there and we're talking about the thunder and lightning as well. So our 9 News Weather Impact team trying to keep us updated on several storms that are in around the front range. Kathy's tracking the flood watch tonight because of course we're keeping an eye on those burn scar areas. But we start with Corey Repenag and he is out in Elizabeth. Corey. Hey Tom, we are driving through the town of Elizabeth right now in Elbert County. There's a severe thunderstorm warning that's been issued for this storm. The good news for those who live in the immediate uh, Elizabeth area is that the bulk of the storm has already moved past. So we're in the tail end of this storm right now. But I'll tell you, we just drove through that storm about 10 minutes ago. Extremely heavy rain with lots of water trying to run downhill to get to where it needs to be and uh, that is creating some very minor um, road flooding along some of these roads out here but we also saw some hail in this we saw the small hail but i'll tell you right when we drove down to uh, elizabeth to get into a better cell area to give you a report this storm just literally exploded and that's when they put that severe thunderstorm warning on it and we are expecting to see some one inch hail out of this storm but like I said the good news is it's already past the Elizabeth area headed towards the Kiowa Bennett Road area so it's just a little bit less populated but we are going to head out there to follow this storm to see if anything uh, materializes with this severe thunderstorm. It's currently the only uh, area that has severe thunderstorm warnings on it. But Kathy, the rain that we have seen come down in a very short amount of time is very concerning. And if that is, type of rain is falling in any of the burn scars, that could be a recipe for big trouble. Yeah, Corey, you and I have been tracking this for the last three days and we've been watching the rain day after day and the burn scar areas have held up being tested with all of this heavy rain. But those trying to get their kids from school or get home from work and dealing with the flooding on the roadways, it's going to be an ongoing problem throughout the evening as more rain showers are moving off the foothills. The storms tracking from the southwest toward the northeast, cooling temperatures a bit. We've been sitting in the mid 80s and we're tracking the potential for additional severe development tonight because just enough heating today that we're seeing the atmosphere destabilize. Severe thunderstorm warning in Elbert County near Elizabeth, where Corey is, extended up into Douglas County and Parker, Kiowa, and now extended up into Arapahoe County. This is that nasty cell that Corey's sitting underneath, and yeah, he said we're expecting some hail with it, and hopefully that does not materialize, but as it tracks north and east, central Arapahoe County now taking a part of this storm as it kind of flanks to the north, and then Corey mentioned the burn scars. We've been watching lions very closely with another flash flood warning today for over an inch of rain in the Stone Canyon burn scar. Thankfully, you're seeing the heaviest rain has passed that area, but we're still concerned about the steep terrain, debris flow and mudslide potential. We've had rain day after day after day, and this system here dropping an inch of rain in and around the Boulder County and Larimer County areas and right up into Fort Collins. So it is an active afternoon of weather. Denver today Today is not included in the flood watch that we saw issued for Denver yesterday, but it's all around us. And that certainly doesn't mean that we're not going to see some flooding here in the city. A level two for severe weather development in northeastern Colorado tonight. Hail and flash flooding will be the biggest threat. Temperatures will take kind of a downturn here out of the 80s into the 70s. And coming up, we'll check the radar again and the burn scar areas for additional uh, potential for rain and flooding tonight. We'll have that just ahead. I was praying for this day and it has come and I am just trying to take a deep breath of air for the first time in almost a year and a half. A Denver cardiologist, of course, trained to help people, is now a convicted serial rapist. Stephen Matthews found guilty today on 35 of 38 counts for drugging and raping multiple women. 
Nine News investigates Jeremy Hahola has been following this trial. He joins us live from the courthouse. And Jeremy, you got the chance to speak to victims and jurors that sat as alternates. Yeah, that's right, Kim. As the judge read out those 35 guilty convictions, Stephen Matthews had quite the emotional, visible reaction in court. One of his victims says he should spend the rest of his life in lockup. We, the jury, find the defendant, Stephen Matthews, guilty of choose only one. It is sexual assault incapable of appraising nature of conduct. Today's verdict marks the end of a month-long, emotionally heavy trial here at this Denver courthouse. Eleven women shared stories of Stephen Matthews drugging them. Most of them say he also sexually assaulted them. It's extremely clear that this is somebody who should not be allowed to interact with the general public. Audrey is one of the survivors. Their stories followed a pattern. Matthews would meet his marks on dating apps, give them drinks at his home, and then they would lose their memory. So I don't think if he was ever allowed back out that this would be something that would stop. So a life sentence. Um, and that's hard. I, you know, obviously never wish that on anyone, but he's made his choices and there are consequences for that. He will repeat this. He will do it again. It is who he is to his core. He should never be allowed to do it again. This woman, who is also a victim and doesn't want to be named, was also in court and watched as her perpetrator put his head on the desk as the 35 convictions came down. Did you look over at him and see his reaction at all? Yes. What did you think? I don't care. You did this to all of us. You took away our memory. You took away the ability to live our life carefree. I was 22 when this happened to me. I'm 24. Spent almost two years dealing with the trauma and stress and anxiety. So I don't care. It's been really heavy on us, too, so I can't even imagine all the victims in this as well. Alexa and Lauren sat on the jury for the whole month and served as alternates. It was a good wake-up call, um, but it was really hard to see um, the victims and the pain that they were enduring um, and the amount of victim blaming that was happening is a really good representation of how the world is right now. Now, each of the 35 guilty convictions here carries multiple years, so it's likely that Stephen Matthews will spend the vast majority of his life in the Department of Corrections in Colorado. In the meantime, his sentencing is set for October. Live in downtown Denver, Jeremy Hohola, 9 News. Jeremy, some brave women there. They had to not only report, which is hard enough, but then share that story again in front of a jury and relive it. Very brave of them indeed to come to the public and share their stories. Yes, Kim, very brave. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Hold up reporting. Today, Aurora police went door to door at an apartment building off Colfax and Nome Street, forcing the dozens of people living there to move out. The city is shutting the building down, saying it's an uninhabitable. It says the situation at the apartment complex is the result of years of dangerous code violations and issues with the property management. The city says the people forced out have been offered hotel vouchers through the end of the month. The city would also pay their security deposit once housing is secured. Here's an update this afternoon. Denver City Council is now going to vote next Monday on a sales tax hike proposal. That proposal wants to raise the tax by 0.5% or 5 cents on every $10. Should the plan pass a final vote next week, it would then head to the voters and be on the November ballot. Now, this tax would be separate from the measure already on the ballot to help fund Denver Health. So what is this money meant to do? The mayor's office says the plan would pay for more affordable housing. Our Mark Salinger is going to explain more of the plan tonight on Next with Cal Clark at 6. Well, we had the game this past weekend, and now we're drawing closer to the Broncos season. And this Sunday, fans will get to be back at Empower Field for the first time for a preseason game. So today, the team was unveiling what's new for fans at the stadium. That's why we sent our Broncos insider Mike Kliss to check it out. It really is good. I mean, they've obviously enhanced, upgraded the food. It's, you know, not a shot in a beer and a hot dog anymore. <laughs> the hard hitting report from our Broncos insider, Mike, of course, with the best job of the day, trying out the new food and drinks at the stadium. That includes blue pan pizza or a burger from the tag restaurant group and local chef Troy Gard. The Broncos have added 12 new local restaurants, as well as a new all-inclusive space. That's called Club 1977. The Broncos also continuing their Stadium Artist Series, highlighting local artists who've been able to put up mural, murals and other art throughout. So a new look, 
a new smell, a new taste to the stadium. I know. I always have to think what's easiest to eat on your lap, and that's not but the goal is to get you there, mingle in before and yeah. halftime and other things. Well, obviously, if Troy Guard's involved, if Blue Pan Pizza's involved, yeah, and, they're, and going and going with local restaurants, I think, is a really nice touch because nice. Uh, that 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 helps the community as well. A lot of those restaurants will get a chance to put their fare in front of people who maybe didn't know they even existed. But if they're going to Bronco games, and you know, we'll see if they're so excited with the game that they never go eat. Uh, that could be an issue, too. But obviously, Mike Kliss needed to eat today, which last, was good. Yeah, the last few years, there's been plenty of time to go back and eat. <laughs> but we're hoping it's different this year. Okay, or drink, for that matter. Okay, one thing top of mind for fans isn't this stadium, but where the next stadium's going to be. And Mike Kliss got to ask the team president about that today. No new information. It's, you know, it's certainly a complicated uh, process. It's one that's going to take a long time to figure out. Obviously, we have a lease that runs through 2030. Um, so we're taking our time and, and doing all of the research we can. Um, really, all options are on the table, certainly in terms of what the future could hold. Oh, the rumor mill is a spinning. Yeah, the good news is, <laughs> while there's very little hard information, there's no shortage of rumors. There are so many yeah, good ones out lot, there. <laughs> a lot of great stories that may or may not be based in fact. So <laughs> we'll continue to follow that. Our Broncos insider tends to know this stuff. He'll share yeah. it with you right here at 9 News. Absolutely.